What's going on you guys? So check it right. Aries just dropped a new project on us which happens to be a mixtape titled Kill the King. Now I definitely wasn't expecting this drop considering that early in the year he sort of alluded to taking a break since he had just dropped P2 and also wanted to allow for niggas like Jody, TK and Clint to take on the spotlight this year but it seems like the boy couldn't fight the urge to drop which he did. Now I guess we all should have known that something was coming since he dropped straight to hell as a single. Now I guess with Reese changing his IG profile picture to Michael Myers I guess we should have known that something was coming on Friday the 13th but Reese is very calculated. Now the mixtape consists of 19 tracks where 13 of them are actual songs and 4 of them are clips of prominent figures in the SA industry with Pori aka Ricky, Stogie T and Brenda Fassi all making an appearance. We also had the late and great Hugh Masigel on the intro. Now with each clip it felt like each figure was basically setting the tone as to how Reese was going to approach the next song. Now the tape does have hidden features from Blue Bobby who delivered with some beautiful vocals. We also had Slim Dumpy and Ginger Cho who gave another standout verse this year. Now I loved how Reese featured both of his brothers twice on the tape, doing a song with each of them and then featuring them both on one song as well. Now, since the beginning of Reese's career, he's always viewed himself as a king. Hence, Forever King, which dropped back in May of 2013. And fast forward to present day, we have Kill the King, which sort of speaks to Reese acknowledging his position on the throne and welcoming any challenges that come his way. I mean, throughout the whole tape, Reese was popping his shit, I guess finally realizing the position he holds in the game and how that type of attention and fame may affect others. Now the specific individual in question that Reese was constantly taking shots at is words. I mean, as I said, Reese was going at him on several records, finally taking the gloves off and making it known that he doesn't mess with his former friend anymore. And we also had him throw subliminals to other crew members. Now what are the lines in question? Well, let's get into that. So starting with the get back, we had Reese say the following. I'm working overtime on the night shift. That's why the number one spot is in a vice grip. How are you going to say you don't like this? Turn around then go to studio to bite this. I'm shitting on you and your sidekick. Now these were clearly shots at words and I say that because there has been a narrative of people claiming that words sounds too similar to Reese when he raps but Reese finds it ironic because why are you jacking my style if you don't like my material? Reese then proceeds to say he's shitting on words and his sidekick who I guess is Mash Beats. Now Reese wasn't done there he still had more lines coming for X Global where he said catch me a body I might just you trotted at the bottom when you drop you got the wrong idea of a drop you rap a little but you talk a lot I rap a little then I make a lot from the bottom I just made it out still breathing even at the top and he still continued by saying fuck is you talking about nigga bet you niggas thought I'm running out when all I did was take another route I run the game the way you run your mouth shh shh might be time for you to quiet down. It's time for me to do the talking now. I just want my credit nigga fuck a crown. Now, the only rapper who I know that keeps on running their mouth when it comes to Reese is X Global. I mean, he did a whole three hour episode just spilling the tea about the ins and outs about the crew. And since that interview, he's constantly found the time to still bash the boy. But clearly Reese has had enough as he makes fun of X trotting at the bottom when he does drop, which is funny because X is usually the one talking about Reese falling off and the last time he had a hit was when he was still working with niggas but regardless of a hit the boy still charts touching number one whenever he drops and the same can't be said about X. Now when it comes to the track as a whole it's too smooth where it creates a certain vibe sonically and Reese just added the right touch to it with his hook. So he was just showing off on this one definitely a standout for me. Now, on I know, I'm just assuming here, but it sounded like Reese was addressing X Global once again. And I say that because Reese is talking to an individual who he feels like wants to be him, or at least is obsessed with him. He also spoke on how this nigga gave up on rap and he's become a joke, where he should just retire at this point because we've run out of hope when it comes to him. Now, when hearing that, X was the only nigga that came to my mind. I mean, Reese said lines like, we already know I'm the star of the show cause you niggas ain't even close, you broke. You headache but now you just don't. You ain't a pro, you a hoax. 
You ain't the GOAT, you a ghost. You should have just hung up your jersey. We already ran out of hope, thought eventually you would be dope. This shit feel like a comedy roast. You know who you was anymore. I know who you wanna be though. Now, on a hundred more, we had Reese and Jody going off on words. Like, these two niggas sounded pissed off on this, and A, I'm here for it. So, on the hook, we had Reese talking about dropping a hundred mil if words can't drop a hundred hits. Sort of taunting the nigga, because if you remember on Adam, words was talking about how the whole revenge club could never touch his shit, especially because he believes they lack hits. But Reese isn't convinced and noticed that when Words finally felt as if he had finally made it in the game, he decided to switch and work with MASH. Now in the verse, Reese went on to say, I heard he planning on dropping a diss, gender revealed, that nigga a bitch, him and the niggas he's with. Now that was mad disrespectful from Reese, but it's hip hop I guess. Now we also had Jody have his say when he said, you can even double the check, the paternity niggas, I'm really your pops. Look, I'm really your favorite spray on these records, believe it or not. Biting the formula, yeah, it's my fault, should've checked. If you niggas are teething or not, you niggas are saying that hip hop is dead and forgot to check if I was grieving or not. And he continued by saying, blue tape never needed none of them. Who's safe now? Not even one of them. We are on an incredible run again. So some really tough bars from the brothers, but Jody wasn't done there. He still took time to shit on his haters on Twitter when he said, You Twitter niggas are deceiving the people, don't you ever compare me to way too ahead of my peers. I ran out of patience, I move without fear, give a fuck what a critic is saying. I say what I say, go ahead, tweet a thread. Now the thing about Reese's verse is that even though he took shots at words, he still took aim at Tyson Sabatelli as well when he said, you typing on threads while I'm moving a needle, a lot of you niggas deceiving the people. So even though there's some dope wordplay with these lines, it's quite deeper than you think. If you guys remember earlier this year, Tyson and Michael had a dispute over the One It All beat, where Tyson stated that he posted his version of Once It All on threads to catch Michael's attention so he could reproduce the beat for him, but instead, Reese ended up using the beats on Paradise 2, which caused a huge rift between Tyson and Michael. Now with Reese's lines, it seems like he's saying that Tyson tried to deceive us as the people with his version of the story. But yeah, the boy is still slick with the subliminals. Now if Reese and Jody can mark at 100 mil correctly, then it can surely become a hit, which would be ironic since words claim that they lacked hits. But here we have the brothers dissing him on a potential hit. Hey, that's tough. Now on Ties, which features Cadence, Reese still had more lines for words when he said, I got my back on the wall, but I'll never surrender. Thought I was done, you niggas be saying that shit to your friends, I remember. Pretending you fuck with me just for the club, but I know you got a vendetta. I know that shit is a setup. You should be embarrassed, you gotta do better. Thought you were bringing me down when you counted me out, but I only got bigger. So according to Reese, right, it seems like the niggas that were around him started to count him out, which is possibly why Words left. But unfortunately for him, Reese only got big and feels like Words was only around him because he had clout, which is crazy if that's true because that's his day one, but I guess some relationships aren't meant to last long. Now, before I move on, I want to give a huge shout out to Cadence because he killed his portion of the song. I mean, could we have a blue tape 2.0? Well, if they keep on making music like this, then they have no choice. Now on Too Deep, which features Bubapi, we had Reese taking more shots at X-Global once again, pretty much calling him out for coming across as tough online when speaking on his name. I mean, X has alluded to running down on Reese if he ever catches him in person, which the boy speaks on when he says, if you're looking for beef, then it's up, we can make you a patty. Way too deep with the troop, it's a rally. Kinda like switching the channel, you don't want the static. Most of you niggas ain't savage, you acting. I don't believe what he's saying. He probably online on the net if he's claiming he's active. No capping, I'm keeping it candid. So once again, Reese isn't backing down. And if you're gonna come for the king, you're gonna have to kill him. Now with that said, I mess with this song a lot. I mean, despite Reese talking spicy on this one, the record itself is so laid back. And Blue Barbie complimented the song so well with his vocals, so shout out to him. So now we come to the meats and potatoes of this tape with the record, Kill the King. 
and Re sort of ties everything together by exposing why he had a fallout with words and how X Global played a big part in that. Now Re starts off by addressing X when he says, You pocket watching niggas know what time it is. Hate to be the one to kill your confidence, but all you niggas cowardice. Might have came to prominence in the game, but you can't even tour nine provinces. What a shame. Guess it means I remain the best in the continent. I guess it means you remain slightly anonymous. So Reese is pretty much saying that niggas like X who are busy pocket watching him are insignificant and despite having some status in the game, he can't tour across the country touching all nine provinces whereas Reese considers himself the best in the continent and X is almost anonymous being more of a local artist and not global like his name states. Now Reese then directs his attention at words when he says, it's really astonishing how you gassed off compliments that attempt to make a nigga look powerless. Coming from niggas who tried to leech us but ain't got nothing out of it. Ironically, I'm the one who got under your skin. You don't hate me now, nigga, you been. Wouldn't say my name now, not even on your first interview then. Imagine getting insulted because you question my pen. You should tell your homeboys about your friend. The one who put you on and said he got your back when you decided to quit school to be just like him too. The one you took to see your mom and told her that shit is cool and I'm down to look out for you. But now all of a sudden I coerced you. It isn't true. It's crazy. Who would have knew? I hear that on YouTube from someone you wouldn't know if it wasn't because of me. The one who said fuck a thousand degrees and called you niggas some thieves. Even just said the crew grew apart because I planted the seed. I guess that makes me the person that you want me to be. So Reese said a lot, I mean he first started off by saying that Wurz's ego got inflated because niggas who didn't have the best intentions for him were gassing him up too much, essentially trying to make Reese look lesser than him in the crew. Now because Reese was the main attraction in the group, that didn't sit right with words and Reese feels like he's always hated him for that, sort of growing resentment towards him since TWC. Reese also makes mention of how when words got interviewed by Slicker for product of a praying mother, he refused to speak on Reese, sort of fueling that resentment that Reese believes that words had for him all this time. Reese then proceeds to speak on how he put words on and stated that he would always have his back and because of that confidence in his relationship with Reese, he told his mom he's dropping out of school so he can follow in his friend's footsteps. Now according to Reese, that story changed when he heard X on chopping it with Buddha T, talking about how Reese actually convinced words to drop out. Reese is sort of confused as to how words could allow himself to get close with an individual like X who really didn't have the nicest of things to say when a thousand degrees joined TWC at that time. I mean it was evident on the Chopin It episode. Now on that same interview X sort of blamed Reese for the rubber band gang breakup which is possibly what fueled words to pull away even more. Now Reese continued by saying, I've known you way before you thought about writing to beats. So how the fuck did you and I end up having this beef? I can't believe this is how you actually want it to be. It's not how you're making it seem because this shit really that deep. And he ended off the record by saying, you playing games so let him commence. I know you desperately need to win. You call yourself the prince. I know you're dying to be the king. So go ahead and kill him then. Now, as I said earlier, Reese is in a state of confusion when it comes to words. He doesn't understand how they beefing since they've known each other way before words started rapping and drives the point of his disbelief of the situation because it's actually deeper than we think. He mentions how words needs this type of interaction with him since it's a game to him and he desperately needs to win. Now, considering that words refers to himself as the prince, since he wants to be the king, Reese suggests that he should try come kill him definitely accepting any challenge that comes his way. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Words responds to this because if I'm listening to Reese, he sounds like he's prepared for a battle if shit happens to pop off. But Kill the King is definitely one of those gut-wrenching records that hit deep and I believe Words needs to match Reese's energy. Otherwise it's not looking too good on his end but I'm sure a response will be cooked up. It's just a matter of when we'll get it. But with that said, this mixtape felt like Reese was finally acknowledging his position in the game. And he truly feels like he's the best. I just found it entertaining how the beats were so laid back, but this nigga was talking mad spicy. Like he was unhinged, but calculated at the same time. And that's someone you shouldn't take lightly. Now before I end up the video, we do need to give a big shout out to Michael Tui and Kaiser Beats. I mean the production was impeccable and them niggas delivered and there's no denying that. But with that said, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed. 
please make sure to hit that like button if you found the content dope and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already it's on to the next one peace